So let's look at some of the estimates that Bill Gates comes up with uh, for uh, green premiums on these four or uh, five sectors of uh, how we plug in, how we manufacture things, uh, how we produce food, how we transport, and how we heat and cool. So we are here talking about 27% of the 51 billion tons per year. And we have seen this in many ways that the electricity uh, is now coming mostly from uh, what we would call not so clean or dirty sources. So coal is definitely dirty. Natural gas is cleaner. Hydropower is cleaner. Nuclear, uh, renewables, of course, a small percentage right now, oil and others. So when you do life cycle analysis, there are obviously different levels of emissions from each. How much stuff does it take to build and run a power plant? So this is looking at 1,000 tons per terawatt hour for solar PV, uh, hydropower, wind, geothermal, coal, nuclear, and natural gas in terms of concrete and cement, steel, glass, and other materials. So obviously it's talking about uh, comparing not just how clean solar uh, and wind are, but actually uh, how much stuff does it take to uh, actually build a power plant and run it. So you can see that solar PV right now at utility scale uh, would be more than 15,000 tons per terawatt hour. Hydropower is uh, just under 15, wind is just around 10, geothermal is lower at 5. Coal doesn't take that much at all, so you have to be sure that in a life cycle analysis we are actually uh, more than making up for replacing coal with other things obviously works out fortunately nuclear and then natural gas so that's something to keep in mind a uh, quick point about uh, is nuclear da power dangerous in drawdown we called it a regret solution because of proliferation waste uh, mining uh, safety uh, public anxiety and so on and, and accidents that have happened. Uh, so deaths per terawatt hour, coal is very high, really a killer in terms of pollution as well. Uh, oil, biomass, gas, and then there is nuclear. But of course, there are very few nuclear plants compared to the number of these other plants. So if we increase the number of nuclear plants, then what happens. So this story is not that simple. So that's about how we plug in and how we need to think about energy and the drawdown from there. Uh, how we make things. So 31% of the 51 billion tons per year has uh, comes from there. So if you just look at countries like India and China, which are growing and want to grow uh, fast in terms of economies and bringing their people uh, to a good standard of living, can't blame anybody for doing that. That's how pe countries have gotten richer. So United States, between 1901 and 2000, it produced 4.3 billion tons of uh, cement, whereas China, just between 2001 and 2016, has uh, produced 25.8 billion tons of uh, cement. So you can see where that's headed. But if you think about uh, alternatives uh, uh, for these materials, green premiums for plastic steel and cement okay so materials ethylene so plastic steel and cement look at average uh, price per ton carbon emitted per ton of uh, material made <clears throat> obviously steel and cement are quite dirty but so is uh, plastic new price for uh, after carbon capture that's how much is estimated for carbon capture and uh, use or sequestration, so CCU or CCS. And the green premium on this skin ranges from 9 to 15%, 16 to 29%, and for cement, 75% to 140%. We know that cement is a big, big, big challenge. We talked about alternative cement and the process of <clears throat> producing the uh, clinker and so on and so forth. So it's a really dirty business. Um, to sum up that part, the path to zero emissions in manufacturing uh, requires that uh, everything be uh, electrified uh, when possible. This is going to take a lot of innovation. Get that electrici electricity from a power grid that's been decarbonized already. This also will take a lot of innovation. Use carbon capture to absorb the remaining emissions. And so uh, this will also require uh, innovation and use materials more efficiently same right 
So the next one is how we grow things. This we call food and land use in Drawdown. So this is 19% of the 15 billion tons uh, a year. You can think of it as uh, emissions from livestock and agriculture. <clears throat> so this is a million tons of meat. Uh, it turns out that uh, most countries aren't consuming more meat, but countries like India and China with growing wealth, growing middle class, they are increasing fish and meat consumption. So China is headed way up there uh, in terms of uh, millions of tons of meat, whereas the US and European Union remain fairly flat, uh, even in the projections into the next decade or so. Uh, so is Brazil, which is surprising because Brazil and Argentina are massive beef eaters and uh, Mexico is down here as well. Obviously wealth sometimes has something to do with it but you can see that rich countries may have reached their peak meat consumption whereas growing uh, economies like China and India, India is not shown here but I'm sure India's numbers are also around the same. So we need to bring that uh, down and there is some evidence that uh, COVID has brought down meat consumption in China but this is not clear whether this will be a permanent change or whether things will get back to normal soon. Uh, transportation, 16% of the 51 billion tons uh, per year. So COVID-19 is slowing down but not stopping the growth of transportation emissions. So you can see here um, the flattening happened around uh, 2021 and China uh, is expected to uh, peak and they have made great commitments. Uh, other low and middle class income countries will continue to add billions of tons of CO2 going into the next couple of decades. US is expected to decrease, India is expected to increase, but India has also made uh, plans for EV electric vehicles, but uh, implementation is still uh, a long way to go. So the temporary dips in uh, financial uh, situation, financial uh, turndowns or slowdowns and COVID are not going to be having any long-term uh, effects. So green premium to replace gasoline with advanced biofuels. So gasoline uh, will be 106% when zero carbon option per gallon is uh, used. Green premium to replace gasoline with zero carbon alternatives uh, will again be at uh, 106 to 237 uh, percent. So this is advanced biofuels and this is electro uh, biofuels. Uh, okay and green premiums to replace diesel uh, is going to be uh, very high as well at the low end and the high end. Uh, green premiums to replace jet fuels with zero carbon alternatives 141 percent to 296 uh, percent green premium to replace gasoline with zero carbon alternatives. So you get the idea that uh, while the goals are uh, noble in terms of going to net zero, the question remains how will we pay for these premiums involved in going green and how they will be incentivized either by regulations, policies, new innovations, uh, and what are the new innovations needed to make them happen. Uh, how we keep cool and stay warm, 7% of the 51 billion tons a uh, year. There is some good news here. So green premiums for installing an air sourced heat pump. We looked at this in Drawdown as well. Different uh, cities, depending on uh, the, the climate. Uh, cost of natural gas and electric for air conditioning. Cost of air sourced heat pump, much cheaper. So the green premium in each case here is negative. So this seems like a good move to go towards uh, heat pumps. Uh, green premiums to replace current heating fuels with zero carbon alternatives. So current and zero carbon. So you can see uh, green premium is uh, uh, widely varying and can be uh, as high as 425%. Again, raising questions about uh, how we would pay for it. Okay, so Bill Gates also goes through uh, what individuals can do, what innovations are needed, uh, what uh, uh, policy prescriptions are needed, what technology innovations are needed, and so on. 
I'm not going to go through all those because they are basically what we have already seen uh, either under drawdown or under coming attractions. And uh, the main thing I wanted to point out is that he's thinking about uh, green premiums in switching to environmentally friendly ways of getting to net zero have to be seriously considered for innovations, for research funding, for policies, and for individual actions as well. So that's kind of a brief, brief introduction to the book by Bill Gates on how to avoid a climate disaster.